The next thing that we'll review is anterior cruciate ligament tears. So we'll go through normal anatomy and what a torn ACL looks like and also look at some of the secondary signs of an ACL tear. So next we'll move into the evaluation of the cruciate ligaments and first we'll start off with the ACL. So this is a sagittal view and we're starting in the lateral aspect of the knee and as we start to move more medial here's the fibular head and the biceps femoris and we'll get into the joint and the first thing we see is bone bruising. So bone bruising is present usually with an ACL on the anterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle and the posterior aspect of the lateral tibial plateau. And a bone bruise usually occurs because of the subluxation that happens with an ACL tear. So this portion of the tibia was impacted against the anterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle at this location. Most people who feel a pop when they tear their ACL have, it, have the pop occur because there's a bone bruise. And this is what happens here. So that's very common, about 70% of people have bone bruises with anterior cruciate ligament tears. As we start to go more anterior, we can see where the bone bruise occurs and it's usually at the location between the trochlea and the lateral femoral condyle, which is called the sulcus terminalis. As we start to go more anterior, we can see some more bone bruising in this case, and then we'll look for the outline of the ACL. So normally the ACL will be a dark structure within the center of the knee. It does not have a lot of signal uptake, and we'll see in this case that it's completely blown apart. So here's some remnants of the ACL fibers here, and we just don't see a normal ACL. So that's what we're looking at in acute cases, is looking for swelling or edema and looking for extra fluid which would indicate there's some bleeding in that location. As we go more medial we can start to see that there's a lot of fluid in the joint which is consistent with bleeding from an ACL tear. Here's the PCL which looks like a normal course and we'll also look along the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. It's not uncommon to have a bone bruise at this location and the anterior translation of the knee will often cause a tear of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus where there's an ACL tear, which we can see here. So instead of seeing a normal fiber presence between the meniscus and the posterior aspect of the capsule, you can see that there's some increased signal in here, which is some fluid, which is consistent with a posterior horn medial meniscus tear, which is very common with an ACL tear. Here's also a bone bruise at this location, and these bone bruises make one suspicious that there may be a posterior lateral corner injury. So that's a secondary sign of a posterior lateral corner injury that also needs to be checked on these. We can also look at the coronal films. And the coronal films allow us to look at the course of the ACL within the notch. So normally we'd like to see it attach well within the confines of the intercondylar notch. As we look at the coronal views, we'll start from anterior to posterior. And you can see all the fluid within the joint, which is consistent with bleeding from an ACL tear, which is a tear of the middle genicular artery. As we start to go more posterior, we'd look for some bone bruising of the anterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle, which we can see along here. And we'll start to see the stump of a torn ACL here. So instead of seeing the normal contour and dark uh, substance of the ACL itself, we'll start to see more of a balled up appearance of where there was a violent injury and the ACL was torn mid-substance. We'll see the same thing as we go back, where there just isn't good continuity between the anteromedial bundle of the ACL and the posterior lateral bundle of the ACL coursing towards the lateral aspect of the intercondylar notch. So we can see that where there's just a lot of increased signal and fluid here that's consistent with an ACL tear. Also noting on this we can see the posterior horn of the medial meniscus tear where there's some disruption of the fibers of the posterior medial aspect of the medial meniscus and it's different than the lateral meniscus where there's a good attachment still to the capsule. Finally, we can look at the axial views, but these are not as useful when we're looking at ACL tears. We can see the fluid present within the joint. We can see the articular cartilage of the patellofemoral joint. And it's, we can see a lot of swelling within the confines of the intercondylar notch. But it doesn't show that the detail as well as the sagittal and coronals when we're specifically looking at the evaluation of an ACL tear.